test review. Let's go ahead and start with uh, problem number one here. Identify the vertex and axis of symmetry of each, then sketch the graph. So this is in a standard uh, vertex form here. So not standard form, vertex form, which means it's easy to see the A, H, and K values if we know where to look. The A value is always in front, H comes after the X minus, and then K is always at the end. All right, knowing this, we also know that the vertex is always at H comma K. The one spot where this gets tricky is you always have to flip the sign on H. So if we see a minus one, we have to know it's everything after the minus. The vertex here should be at one comma negative six. The next thing we need to know is that the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes right through the vertex. So how do I pass a vertical line through this point here? I pass it through the X value, X equals one. All right, so here's our axis of symmetry coming down that line, X equals one axis of symmetry at one common negative six. So that's part of our graph right there. Do it in a different color. All right, then sketch the graph. So I've got an A value of one third. So I need to take my pattern one, four, nine, maybe I need to go out to 16, 25, and multiply everything by a third. So I've got 0 0.33, uh, 1.33, three, uh, let's see, 16 over 3, 5.33, 25 over 3, 8.33. So as I move out from the vertex, this is what I'm going to go up by. If I go one unit out, I go just a third of a unit up. Barely noticeable. If I go two units out, I go one and a third units. If I go three units out, I go three units up. So I would normally go nine units up, but it's been cut by a third. Four units up, out, five and a third. One, two, three, four, five, and a bit. Make it symmetrical over that axis of symmetry. Um, so, uh, so that was four units out. Now five units out is eight and a bit. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little bit. Looks like I need to actually keep going. So next one would be 36, because that's 6 squared. A third of that is 12. So 6 out, 12 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And at this point, we're off the graph if we tried to do one more. So that's a, a pretty decent looking parabola. We connect these up. Try to make it just look a little bit curved at the bottom here. In these sections get straighter and straighter. Arrows on both sides to show it goes off to infinity. Uh, all right, so use that to do problem number two. Let's try three and four. This says convert to standard form. So standard form is this here. It is, I'll write it right above it. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. What's important here is no parentheses. So we gotta get rid of the parentheses. I'll try number four, because it's got this a k value at the end we'll have to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this out. One third times x minus five times x minus five plus seven. And I'm going to foil that middle part, but I'm going to keep the one third outside and keep this all in a set of parentheses. So I get an x squared minus five x minus five x becomes a minus 10 x plus 25 plus seven. Take a third of each of these, one third x squared um, minus 10 over three x plus 25 over three plus seven. And now combine the like terms at the end here. That seven, I will replace with a 21 over three. So I can combine my like terms and I get final answer. Y equals one third x squared minus 10 thirds x plus 46 over 3, which um, that's not a whole number, so we'll leave it as the improper fraction. All right, so that's for number four. Number three similar. Use number four to guide you on number three. All right, describe the end behavior of each and the y-intercept. So I need to look two places. I need to look to see if the top is even or odd. This one is even. And if the front is positive or negative, this one's positive. 
So the leading coefficient positive, biggest exponent even. So the positive means that the it will end up, so the second word will be up. Even means they'll match, so this one will be up, up. And the y-intercept is always the constant at the end. So we can just say y-intercept of negative 4, just like that. All right, so this one is negative and odd. So negative means it's going to end down. Odd meaning that they won't match, so up, down. And the y-intercept is positive 1. So uh, 0, comma, positive 1 if you want the ordered pair. All right, find all roots. Let's do number 8. So what I want to do, I don't want to distribute this. That would actually make this harder. I just want to take the individual roots and set them equal to 0. Because if the whole, if these three pieces being multiplied equals 0, I know one of the pieces is 0. And so I'm going to solve for that. Let's see, square root, square root, we get x equals 0, minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2, and plus 2, plus 2, x equals 2. All right, over here, that, that solving step might be just one step harder. When I set that equal to 0, I still have to take the square root. And I get x equals plus or minus the square root of b. So, and I can just finish this one. x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. For the same reason from this factor here. All right, quadratic formula. Time to put it to use. I'll do number 10. Looks maybe just a tiny bit harder. First thing, I need this to be set equal to 0. So I add 7n to both sides. And I get 4n squared plus 7n minus 65 equals 0. Now I can clearly see my a, b, and c values for the formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now do as much as you can in your head. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times... 4 times negative 65 all over 8. Uh, that's 9, let's see. Uh, negative 7 plus or minus the square root. The discriminant I might just plug into my calculator. So 49 minus parentheses 4, parentheses 4. Oh wait, one of those should be. 4, 8, yep, they're both 4s. Parentheses, negative 65. I get 1,089 all over 8. And I'll double check that that's not a perfect square. I'm pretty confident it's not. Oh, actually, it is. Good thing I double checked. So I thought that was not a perfect square, but it is. It's exactly 33. So... Because that's 33, I can keep going. I can make this negative 7 plus or minus 33 all over 8, which I can split into negative 7 plus 33 over 8 and negative 7 minus 33 over 8. Uh, let's see, that become a 24 over 8 or 3. This would become a negative 40 over 8, which is negative 5. And that's our answer. Put an n equals in front. <coughs> All right, on to the back. <coughs> so state it's the given binomial as a factor of the given polynomial. Use synthetic division, see if you get a 0. So we'll do so number 11. So what I want to do is write down the coefficients. The coefficient of this is a 1, and a negative 15, 51, negative 9, negative 13. If I skip a term, like I don't have a linear term, then I put it in a 0 there. But here, I've got all my terms. And then I don't check with the negative 10. You check with the positive 10. You check with the, check with the root, not the factor. All right, drop down the 1. 1 times 10 is 10. 
Add the column, we get negative 5. Multiply by the 10, we get negative 50. Add the column, we get 1, then 10, then 1, then 10 again, and negative 3. So this is no, not a root. Let's double check number 11 there. 11 is a no. Looks like it was going to be because it stayed pretty close to 0, but we got negative 3, which is not 0. All right, got some operations with imaginary numbers here. Uh, let's just look at 13. So I want to get rid of the parentheses. So double check, you don't have to distribute anything. Uh, here I do not, so I can just drop them. And then I can gather the real part in front, so the negative 5 and the 4 becomes a negative 1, and the imaginary part at the end, negative i plus uh, 8i is going to be plus 7i. And it's just like that. So that's not too bad. Where it gets more challenging is multiplying them. Let's try 16 real quick. To do this, I need to expand this as 7 plus 6i times 7 plus 6i. And then I need to FOIL it. So first, outside, inside, last. 49 plus 42i plus 42i plus 36i squared i squared is equal to negative 1, so 36i squared is equal to negative 36. Gather your like terms. 49 minus 36 is a 13, and then 42i plus 42i is an 84i. Okay, um, with problem like uh, 18, we have to FOIL these first. So FOIL just these first two, and then we'll simplify it, then we'll FOIL on that last one. So I get 15, let's see if I can do this, negative 12 minus 30 is going to be a negative 42i. And then I'm going to get a positive, temporarily positive 42i squared, which will flip to being a negative 42. So if that's a negative, not 42, 24. So if that's a negative 24, then combine it with this 15, get a negative 9. So negative 9 minus 42i. And now FOIL it again with this last part, the 8 minus 8i. And we'll get uh, negative 72 um, plus 72i. Let's get to that in my head. Negative 42 times 8. Is a negative 336i plus 336i squared, which immediately becomes a negative 336. So negative 336 minus 72. Combine those, you get negative 408. Combine these, so 72 minus. 336 equals negative 264i. Let's check that one on 18. Yep, that's right. Okay, last couple here. Uh, identify the vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes for each. So vertical, you just set the bottom equal to zero. So we're going to say negative x squared plus 4 equals zero because we don't want to divide by zero. That's what causes those vertical asymptotes. Divide both sides by negative one. So I get x squared minus four equals zero. Add four, add four. x squared equals four. Square root, square root. x equals plus or minus two. So those are my vertical asymptotes. Now for the horizontal asymptote, see if the degree of the top matches the bottom. They do. So now we defer to the leading coefficients, so 1 over negative 1, that is our horizontal asymptote, is that y equals negative 1. All right, I will tell you, this one over here does not have a horizontal asymptote. The degree of the top is going to be one more than the degree of the bottom, which actually means slant, but you can just remember that this is not horizontal asymptote. The degree of the bottom here is a little bit disguised because you'd have to FOIL this first, but you'd get a 4x squared as your leading term. And then that means the, the biggest exponent is a 2. So bigger exponent on top means no horizontal asymptote. Bigger exponent on the bottom means yes horizontal asymptote, but it's always at 0. 
and when they tie, we go to the leading coefficients, which is what we did here. All right, uh, let's just graph number 22. That's got a little bit of everything. So normally, these types of graph ha graphs have a vertical asymptote along the y-axis, a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, but this one's been shifted. This plus 2 is going to move it left 2. So instead of having a vertical asymptote go right along the y-axis, it's over here a little bit. Let's do that with the dotted line. All right, and then this minus 2 here, at the end, that moves us up or down, and this one moves us down to. So instead of being right along the x-axis, it's down here just a little bit. All right, and now apply this negative to the top. This is a negative 3 for a, so a equals negative 3. That means we can get to our first point by going to where these intersect, going over 1 and then down 3. 1, 2, 3. All right, and then make it symmetrical over here by going over 3, down 1. And then make it symmetrical into this quadrant by going up 3, backwards 1, or backwards 3, up 1. And that gives us all of the points to be able to make this graph here. Okay, let's call it good there.